Well, uh, my name is uh, Joseph Amankra. Uh, I represent an organization called uh, Kamara Skills Training Network. I um, also work at Rising University. Um, the purpose of me being here today is basically to uh, explain to you what we do. And what we actually do is to introduce the skill trades to the youth. Now, these are the youth in the inner city core, the high priority areas. And the skill trades that we introduce to them are not the conventional ones. I'm not sure if a lot of you might know. The industrial skill trades. These are the skill trades that are basically invisible to anybody in the sense that if you're not connected to them. And these areas are electri the, uh, sorry, electrical. So I've got electrical on the brain. <laughs> the brain works electricity anyway, right? Okay. <laughs> these are machinists welders and mill rates. These are the areas that are needed for manufacturing. And manufacturing is coming back, no matter what you think. It's already started in the States. And if you know right now, the, the unemployment rate has actually dropped again in the United States. And that's because manufacturing is coming back. And if you're listening to the news this morning, General Motors is, is going to be spending $250 million out in, in Thomas area, in Thomas, Ontario. St. Thomas. St. Thomas. And they're increasing their manufacturing facilities out there. So that's industry and manufacturing again. But the only thing that that's, that's different is that the manufacturing sector is now, being, is now going to be a lot more technical. Most people are aware that manufacturing is all oh, you assemble a car, you put, uh, put a refrigerator together. No. It's more skilled than that. Now, the, the reason myself and my colleagues started doing this organization for the skilled trades for the youth is that we're seeing an abundant amount of uh, youth that are getting themselves into trouble. For the simple thinking that they, they say that, uh, well, I don't need to finish school. I just go and do the trades. Until they realize you need an academic component. A high academic component. And if anybody says to you, well, I don't need to use my brain, I'll use my hands. Okay, take your brains out and see if your hands will work. Okay, so this is, this is basically, we deal with youth and women. And we try to introduce the uh, non-traditional areas of manufacturing. And I'm not sure if you've heard of the green energy field. The new green energy sectors? No? Yeah. Yeah. Yes? It's electrical, right? No, it's energy. No, no, no. But it's energy. But energy produced is electrical. Am I correct? Uh, somehow. Somehow. Okay. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Oh, it's tough. <laughs> okay, no, no, that's okay. I'm going to get back to you. Right? <laughs> the energy is fuel, energy is... Uh, well, they, they consider the green energy field, and the energy that's produced actually goes into what? Electrical. Work. It's electrical. It's always electrical. No matter what you say, the solar panels generates electricity. Yeah. The wind turbine, electricity. Okay? The, the uh, nuclear generates electricity. Okay. So, the United States realized um, two years ago that uh, they have to put more infrastructure into the green energy fields. And so they designated electrical, anything electrical was part of that, that sector. And then all of a sudden they realized you cannot produce electricity unless you have certain things. Who's going to build the generators? Who's going to build the solar panels? And then all of a sudden they realized, uh oh, we need other areas of the trades to be designated as green energy. And those three trades are machinist, millwright, and welding. For you to produce any of these generators, you need those skill sets. And we're trying to introduce those skill sets to the youth in the inner city core. It's been extremely difficult. I'm not sure if anybody has, has, has uh, children. Children of around 16 years old and up? No? Okay. I work at Rice University. And I deal with uh, students graduating every year, and the majority of them won't find work. I'm in the mechanical engineering department. And it's so difficult for them to find work that the only ones who get work right away are the ones that actually take uh, extracurricular activities. And that is basically activities where they use their hands. And so the combination of the two gets them work. So we're trying to introduce the skill trades to the youth in inner city core. I'm not sure if you're aware, you must have heard of the 13 priority neighborhoods. No? High priority neighborhoods? 
No? Okay. When is the shooting? You always hear something, right? Okay. Predominantly is that area. Now, the, major, the, what, the history that you should know about these areas that these troubles are taking place of were the high manufacturing areas of Ontario. Places like, have you heard the, gold, the Golden Mile? Victoria Park in Eglinton? No? Mount Dennis? Jane and Finch? All those areas were the major manufacturing centers of Ontario. Then as time went, they moved out of those areas. The, uh, the housing became cheaper, people moved into, into those areas, they have children, no work. That's how it starts. The same thing is happening in Europe, in all the European cities. The major European cities that are, had uh, high manufacturing areas are now having the same problem with youth. The youth unemployment rate in Spain right now is close to 40%. In Ontario it's 16%, but it actually is close to around 20%. And so we need to train these young people. They are crying out for help. They're not dumb. They're extremely smart. They just need the help. We're looking for tradespeople that can impart their skills to them, but in a particular skill trade. We're planning for the future, not right now. And so women and uh, young um, men and women are what our key component is. We actually carry out an, uh, a, a non-profit free training to youth and women. It's a pre, it's a, actually, it's not a pre-apprenticeship. It's an introduction. Okay? It's an introduction to the trade. So they know what this entailed before they actually go into it. Now, I'm not sure if you know about the millwrights trade. Anybody's a millwright here? In the millwrights trade, there's a 60% dropout rate the first year amongst apprentices. 60% of the new apprentices in the millwright drop out. For what reason? The academic component. It's harder than they imagine. So if you see a guy walking around with a boiler suit and he's erecting a, installing a new machinery, and you say, well, he's kind of dumb, you'd be surprised. When that guy pulls all, goes on $120,000, $30,000 a year, then you know, well, maybe I should go in there. But it takes experience. And so I'm here today to just introduce areas of the skill trades as a manufacturing skill trades. You don't see it now, but it is coming. The actual shortage, the actual uh, age requirements of the people in the in the skill in the machinist skill trades now are close in their fifties and sixties. Majority of them are going to be retiring in the next five years, so there's going to be a glut. The universities and col well, colleges won't be able to keep up because they haven't started recruiting for those skills yet. And so, as time comes, they're going to have to start putting those skills in there. But it takes longer than four years to produce a true machinist, a millwright, and a welder. And so these are the areas we're trying to encourage people to try and get into, especially the young, especially in the inner city core, because our, our main goal is to try and bring industry back to those areas. Areas where the, the, uh, the, the populace is there for the work, but the work is not there. So we're looking to try and educate people, parents, schools, because the schools aren't looking in those areas anymore. Uh, we've done programs uh, years ago where we try to encourage the, the youth to get into the machinist. This was about five years ago. The parents told them, no, you don't want to get in there because it's manufacturing. The program did not run. So parents have a great influence on the, on the youth to actually do these actual trades. And people look at the trades as being dumb. Sorry, if you own a BMW, you take it to the mechanic, what do you do? You call they still call him dumb? No? You drive a Mercedes and BMW? It can't be dumb if he's fixing your car, which you can't. Okay? It's a matter of respect. Respect works both ways. But some mechanics are really smart. They don't drive BMWs and Mercedes. How about a component? You've got to design it, but how do you build it? You can design anything, but somebody's got to build it. Okay? What skills do you need to build it? Who's going to operate those machines? Computers do not do it all. You have to tell a computer what to do. Right now, uh, if you go to CNC machines, CNC lathes, CNC milling machines, CNC, no? Okay. Um, 15 years ago, a CNC operator could earn close to around eh, about $60, $70, an hour. And now, a dime a dozen. If you get $15, $18 an hour, you're, 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 you're doing well. 
They've gone back to the realized the general machinist. They want something that can make it complete. The CNC will only do a certain part, unless you want to invest $500,000 on two machines. A CNC lathe and a CNC mill. It'll make a certain component, but it won't do the complete thing. But these are the areas I'm trying to introduce people to. I'm, I know the majority of people here are electrical, but there is areas that are not electrical that are coming. You can't see it yet. If you really want to see it, look at what's happening in the United States. Okay? The trickle up effect, not down, okay, because we're above them, all right, will be coming this way. All right? And this is what we're trying to introduce, trying to get the youth in the inner city core and women to look at those non-traditional areas of, uh, of careers and employment.